Yo, y'all know what time it is, man. Billy Red Face Burr talking about Ric Flair. I I remember him talking about Ric Flair on one of his podcasts, and I haven't got to see uh, the Ric Flair documentary of 30 for 30 or something like that yet, but he, he was making me die and laugh, man. Anyways, hit the subscribe button if you're new, man. Let's jump into this video, man, because it's hilarious. I'm pretty sure this is from this podcast, though. I'm not sure, though. It says live. I don't know. All right, I started to hype something here. 40 minutes, everybody, just like that. Just like that, yeah, 40 minutes podcast. that you'll never get back. Um, I thought oh. he was going to be standing up. I thought there was going to be Live podcast. more of a show. I thought there'd be showgirls. Um, I saw, I might as well stand up. It's so fucking hot in here. Um, oh, he's standing up. He's, he's standing up. He wants the world to know that the fucking podcast... Huh? What do you mean, speak up? I got two fucking microphones here. How much more can I speak up, sir? Are they canceling each other out with amplification? Are they both polite? No, you go. No, you go. We were both born in the 90s. I don't want to offend you with my yellow skin and your black skin. I want to sit in this big chair because I feel like I would think that I, I know something over here. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Masterpiece Podcasting. Um, wow, this is weird, now I got in here, there's a whole new sound in here. Um, I hate that I'm at the fucking old age where I have to cross my legs when I sit down. I don't know what happens, remember as a kid you just fucking sat down, now I gotta sit there constantly stretching out my fucking hip. Um, this couch was supposed to be nailed down! Um, so I saw the premiere of the Ric Flair Nature Boy. Dude. Yeah, that's what we want here. I don't think I've ever fucking laughed that hard. Bro, I mean, I have to go back to like a Richard Pryor special. That guy is arguably one of the funniest fucking human beings ever. <laughs> and I have to tell you something. What I can commend about that guy in this Nature Boy 30 for 30 that you have to fucking see is he did not run from anything. He owned up to everything, good or fucking bad. They were sitting there talking about like, you know, him fucking around on his wife. And he was just going, yeah. You go, how long were you faithful for in your marriage? He just goes, one day. God bless. And he was like, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I came home and I spent a day with my family and I was like bored out of my mind. I was in hell. And it was so fucking refreshing <laughs> to hear a married guy talk about how badly he wants to continue fucking as many women as he possibly could, right? <laughs> Now, I know the laughs are going to go down because there's too many women here and every guy has to sit there and act like he was, you know, like, <laughs> probably thinking about it right fucking now. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, he talked about everything, just being like, just all the women he was with. And at one point, they cut back to his first wife, who he calls number one. <laughs> No, this guy is a fucking legend. <laughs> and she just cuts back to him and she's just like, yeah, Rick wasn't a family man. <laughs> <laughs> I was doubled over laughing. <laughs> and then, you know, it definitely has its sad points, but he doesn't run from it. If you can say he's a bad father or if he's maybe like an alcoholic. I, I don't want to ruin too many of the lines, but he was just saying, like, I don't know if I'm an alcoholic. I, I never tried to quit. <laughs> It was just one fucking closing <laughs> bit after another with this guy. It's like, I would close with that. I would close with that. I would close with that. <laughs> and he just kept going. Oh, my God. He amazing. did tell this one story. I'm all twisted up in my 20 fucking microphones. He did tell this one story to the crowd that was there. He talked about how one night he was on the road and he was out partying. And he goes, and I woke up with a couple of, I goes, I woke up next to an alien. Which is what he calls being like blackout drunk and, and just waking up next to some woman you don't even know her fucking name. So he goes, I woke up and there was an alien on, alien on one side and an alien on the other. And I looked down and my Rolex was missing. So I wake the women up and I go, uh, hey, where's my, where's my watch? And they go, you don't remember? They go, you don't remember. And he goes, no. He goes, yeah, last night you threw your watch into a bowl of spaghetti and you said, I got 15 of these fucking things. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
<laughs> this was just a throwaway story. <laughs> I mean, this is a comedy club. This is a packed house. I'm killing just remembering lines that he said. I'm telling you, you have to fucking watch this guy. It's, it's like, <laughs> I'm telling you, they ought to give him like the Mark Twain Award. They're always giving it to like these, these fucking people. You know, I'm, you know, they give it to some people that are funny, but then other times they just, you know, sometimes that's like, that guy is not as funny as fucking Ric Flair. You got to get him in there, you know? You know, they wouldn't. No, because it's always like the, uh, you know, the, the arts and Meryl Streep and blah, 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 blah. Get the fuck out of here. You know, you think she could fucking be that good an actress after a couple of back body drops? You know? <laughs> you think she could do the flare flop and keep that, keep that period correct wig that she has on? I don't know why I'm trashing Meryl Streep. I have no idea why. You know why? Because she's always getting awards. You know? Yeah. Fuck her for doing such great work. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is the dumbest shit. You know how this business works. If you trash anybody, you, you inevitably you end up working for them. I can't tell you how many times that's... I haven't gotten a lot of acting work, but every time I've ever gotten acting work and I'm in the fucking uh, hair and makeup, I always get to skip the hair part, of course. I go over to the makeup side of the trailer. Inevitably, somebody comes walking in. I'm like, oh, shit, I trashed that person. Mm. I hope they didn't hear that podcast. All right. Um, oh, by the way, I got to do, do a promotion. I got to do a promotion. I saw... I went to a, a movie premiere... Uh, of the 30 for 30, the nature boy, Ric Flair, is coming out. I gotta see that, man. I have to tell you this right now. Might be the best 30 for 30 I ever fucking saw. Um, It should be 90. It actually, it is 90 minutes. It is 90 minutes. I thought it was only 30 minutes. It was 90 minutes, sir. It wasn't. Your your dream came true. (laughs) See that, everybody? I'm going to start a charity for this guy, and a portion of the proceeds are going to go to, towards him. The rest of them are going to go to me in a new fucking drum kit. I'll put his picture on the bass drum head. <laughs> Each day, thousands of people are dying of cancer, and I want a boat. If you call this number... Mm. We can it's put terrible. a slight dent in it, and I can get the boat of my fucking dreams and finally get rid of my wife and start living openly with my mistress. Please take the number down. The first 300 people that call in will get a free T-shirt with a donation of over three times the cost to produce this T-shirt. No one will check to see if the T-shirts were actually sent out. That's the move, people. There's two fucking, there's three moves to make in this country at this point if you want to exist in the future. One, you either grow weed in anticipation that it becomes legal at a federal level and you can get it out of your fucking state. Because I know in Colorado, I guess they're drowning in the shit. They got more weed than they got hippies. (laughs) They got more. Oh my God, I got to tell you, the the dirtiest looking white people you're ever going to see in your life are in Colorado. I can't imagine being a minority in Colorado looking at the white people there. You gotta be thinking like, how the fuck are we working for these people? How, how are these people running shit? I mean, everybody just looks like they fell into a vat of patchouli, right? You know, they're always inner tubing and shit. They just live outside, they're just, I don't know, that's like in the Denver area, you know, then you get out in the western part of the states, and then, then it gets better, you know, you got the Illuminati's in the Rocky Mountains, you know what I mean, they make sure it stays nice and cold up there, so the body of their first wife never, it never melts away, you know what I mean, that's what they keep doing, that's the code word, what, you going skiing with your third wife today, yeah, we're going on the double black diamond, that's code for I'm going to fucking steer her into a tree, You know, that's what's going to happen when global warming really hits and all this snow melts up in fucking Aspen and Vail. The amount of dead women that are going to be underneath there. The amount of first wives. The before I made my first million love. You know what I mean? When I was at the college level, before I went pro. You know? I don't know. Sometimes I think you ought to be able to kill your first wife, though. Because... 
there's like too many people on the planet and then also can maybe like put them on their heels. Not saying you do it, but just the fact that she would know it was okay. I think from where I sit would have a really positive effect on the relationship. I think the reality television viewing would go down. Um. <laughs> I should do these more because with you guys laughing, I won't get in trouble. You know what I mean? It's when I'm by myself and there's dead silence. It stops sounding like I'm fucking around and it sounds more like, is this guy reading from his own manifesto? So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we'll talk about we come up with creative ways to get rid of people. I guess the optimal number, according to something that somebody sent me, is 500 million people on this planet. And we're up to 6.5 billion. So I think that there's, there's things that you can do. Like, uh, stop rescuing pit bulls. You should just set them free and let them wander the streets mm. in packs. <laughs> and then everybody has a cyanide pill. You know, so if you get, you know, if he wants to be ripped apart by a pack of wild dogs, you can just eat it every once in a while. Or maybe you do that, like... I don't know. Like there's some sort of incentive for your family if you're off yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think if you're off yourself, that's an even better way because then they can like prepare rather than just have a bunch of carcasses on the side of the road. That'll cause diseases, which is good. But after a certain point, you'll be, once we get under 500 million, now you're just killing the chosen ones, the blue chips, right? <laughs> they should have like an NFL combine to find, you know, you gotta get your, like every country has to get their roster down to a, down to a number, right? Like you're allowed to have 100,000 people. You're not allowed to judge it by race, religion, sex, or anything like that, right? And you just have the best of the best of race, sex, religion, all of that fucking shit that we care about, right? You, you just have that. Cruise ships? No, no cruise ships. That's not going to work because that's also an environmental disaster. I, I, I regret doing that bit on my last special. <laughs> I never thought of all the oil that was going to be seeping there. So my new one is that you just let them pull into port and then you just, you just mow them all down. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> They die happy with their silly hats and their flip-flops. Um, I know, none of that's right. This is it's in a time like this, don't you think this should be more caring? Somebody told me today that they're actually selling land on Mars. C can I somehow get in on that? Can I, I'll sell you the whole fucking planet for 15 grand. You can get out there and figure out there's no atmosphere and then you're gonna die. Oh, it's a shame. I mean, it's there, you can see it. Look right through the telescope. I sold you that. That's <laughs> if crazy. you can get there and breathe, it's gonna be all yours. It's gonna be all yours. Um, that's the way, you know something right there? That'd be the first way of how you get rid of people. You sell land on Mars and anybody that goes to buy it, you go, okay, you won. You got a, a little bit of land, come down here to claim it. And then they walk into a room like Joe Pesci and Goodfellas, right? You put a gun to their head. You're like, hey, wait a minute, what the fuck? It's like, well, dude, you obviously don't want to be here. You'd rather go to Mars, it's too crowded, you know? I'm gonna send you to heaven, man. You can see all the planets. All right. Yo, I got a question. Why is Ric Flair's eyebrows black or brown, but his hair is blonde? Is he not naturally blonde? Or do blind people still have brown eyebrows? I don't know how many people's gonna see this at the end of the video, but I just I just wanted to ask that question. If you seen that if you if you if I can't even talk. If you stuck through the video and you heard my question about Ric Flair. Hit the comments. Let me know you heard it, man. Hit the comments. Be like, I don't know what's up with Rick's eyebrows. I don't know. Rick Flair is funny, man. Reminds me of Brett Favre. Anyway, hit the subscribe button if you're new. If you're new.
tell me what's up. <laughs> Shout out RG, man. He's hilarious. All right, man. I'm out.